The Arabian Sea sparkles in the early morning light. At the edge of the harbor stands the Gateway of India, its basalt arches carved nearly two centuries ago. A reminder of colonial history, independence movements, and countless arrivals and departures. Behind it rises a skyline of glass towers, apartments, and historic hotels like the Taj Mahal Palace. It is here that Mumbai's story begins, between the sea and the sky, between tradition and ambition. Mumbai isn't just a place, it's an emotion, a dream woven into the very fabric of its existence. It's the maximum city, the city of dreams, the financial powerhouse that never sleeps. But as the waves crash against the seawall, a question lingers. What will this same view look like in the year 2100? Will the gateway stand safe, or will the sea creep at its feet? Will Mumbai, the city of dreams, still thrum with life, or will it transform into a mega city of steel, glass, and digital skies? To answer these questions, we must journey into Mumbai's past, its present struggles, and its bold future. Not long ago, Mumbai wasn't the sprawling giant it is today. It was simply seven islands separated by swamps and tides. The Portuguese, and later the British, stitched these islands together through massive land reclamation projects. In the 19th century, cotton mills, railways, and the port transformed Bombay into India's industrial engine. Immigrants poured in. Gujarati traders, South Indian workers, Parsi industrialists, and Marathi communities, each leaving their mark. By 1950, the city's population had already passed 3 million, and Bombay had begun to cement its identity as India's financial and cultural heart. Today, Mumbai is a city of breathtaking contrasts. With over 20 million residents, it is among the most densely populated cities in the world. A single square kilometer here can host over 30,000 people, far higher than London or New York. On one hand, you find skyscrapers like Antilia, the $2 billion home of the Ambani family, standing 27 stories tall with three helipads. On the other, you find Dharavi, Asia's largest slum, where nearly 1 million people crowd into just 2.1 square kilometers, living in tin roof houses and narrow lanes no wider than 2 meters. Yet. Taravi is no ordinary slum. It is a hub of recycling, pottery, leather, and small-scale manufacturing, producing goods worth nearly 1 billion dirhams annually. Transport is Mumbai's lifeline. Every day, the city's iconic suburban trains carry more than 7.5 million passengers, more than the entire population of Switzerland. The western, central, and harbor lines hum with activity from dawn until midnight often so crowded that people hang out of doors or ride on rooftops. Buses, taxis, rickshaws, and ferries add to the mix, while new metro lines are slowly emerging as alternatives. For decades, Mumbai cars have joked that if the trains stop, the city itself stops. Economically, Mumbai is unmatched in India. It generates more than 6% of the nation's GDP, hosts the Bombay Stock Exchange, Reserve Bank of India, and countless corporate headquarters. It is the country's financial engine, but it is also the beating heart of Indian culture. Bollywood, based in Mumbai, is the world's largest film industry, producing more than 1,000 films a year, exporting Indian music, fashion, and stories worldwide. Festivals like Ganesh Chaturthi or Diwali transform the city into a river of color, music, and devotion, while cricket matches on the maidens keep the city's sporting spirit alive. But as the present bustles, the future looms large. By 2050, Mumbai's population could rise to 25 to 27 million. To fit them, the city will need to expand vertically and outward. Already, skyscrapers dominate areas like Lower Peril and Bandra Kurla Complex. By mid-century, Mumbai may rival Shanghai or New York in skyline dominance. Housing redevelopment projects are underway in Taravi and across the city, aiming to replace cramped informal housing with modern high-rises. Yet experts warn that without careful planning, such projects may erase livelihoods and force people out of the very neighborhoods that sustain them. By 2050, Mumbai's transport system will look radically different. The Mumbai Metro, currently under construction, could become one of the largest urban rail systems in the world, rivaling Tokyo's. The Mumbai Ahmedabad bullet train, already in progress, will shrink the 500-kilometer journey to less than two hours. Hyperloop technologies may even connect Mumbai to Pune in just 15 minutes. Imagine stepping into a pod at Bandra and emerging in Pune before you've even finished your cup of chai. Economically, Mumbai will tighten its grip as India's financial capital. 
With India projected to become the world's second largest economy by mid-century, Mumbai could join the ranks of London, New York, and Singapore as a global financial hub. Digital banking, fintech startups, and AI-driven stock exchanges may dominate, making the city's financial core a blend of tradition and innovation. Bollywood, too, will evolve. By 2050, audiences may no longer watch films but enter them, experiencing entire stories through VR headsets or holographic theaters. But what about the year 2100? That's where Mumbai's story becomes both thrilling and uncertain. The biggest threat will be climate change. With its long coastline and low-lying areas, Mumbai is among the most vulnerable cities in the world. Studies suggest that by 2100, large parts of South Mumbai, including Marine Drive, Worli, and even the Gateway of India could be underwater. The Arabian Sea is expected to rise by more than a meter by then, and combined with intense monsoons, the risk of flooding could force massive infrastructure changes. Will Mumbai build Dutch-style seawalls like Rotterdam? Will it create floating neighborhoods like those in Singapore? Or will new satellite cities rise inland, drawing population away from the coast? By 2100, the Mumbai skyline may resemble a science fiction dream. Vertical forests will grow on towers, producing fresh air and food. Skyscrapers could be self-sustaining ecosystems, powered entirely by solar panels, wind turbines, and tidal energy from the Arabian Sea. Housing might be modular, units built like Lego blocks, reconfigurable as families grow or shrink. Dharavi may exist only in history books, replaced by smart eco-towns with AI-managed infrastructure. Transport will be unrecognizable in next 80 years. Flying taxis may buzz over the city carrying passengers from Kolaba to Borivali in minutes. Hyperloop systems may link Mumbai to Delhi in less than two hours. Cargo could move underground through robotic tunnels, keeping streets free for pedestrians. The Arabian Sea itself may host floating ports and drone highways, making Mumbai one of the most connected cities on the planet. Economically, Mumbai may finally achieve the dream of becoming an Alpha++ Plus Plus world city, competing directly with New York, London, and Tokyo. The Bombay Stock Exchange might not even be a physical building anymore, but a global digital marketplace, trading assets in Earth's orbit, or even on Mars. By then, India's economy could dominate Asia, and Mumbai would be its shining crown. Even Bollywood will not remain the same. By 2100, films may not exist as flat screens. Instead, audiences might step inside immersion domes, living an entire story for hours or days. Actors may no longer be human, but AI-generated avatars co-designed by fans. Yet at its heart, Bollywood will still carry the same themes, love, music, struggle, and triumph that define India's spirit. Yet, for all its futuristic visions, some things in Mumbai will never change. Children will still play cricket on maidens, Street vendors will still sell hot vada pav to commuters rushing home. Devotees will still carry Ganesh idols to the sea every September. Because Mumbai, more than anything else, is not its buildings or its systems. It is its people, their resilience, and their dreams. And that is the heart of the story. Mumbai has survived famine, floods, terrorist attacks, and pandemics. Each time, it has risen again. By 2100, the gateway of India may stand behind seawalls. Dharavi may be only a memory, and skyscrapers may touch the clouds. But the soul of Mumbai, the dream that brings millions to its shores, will endure. So the final question is this. Will Mumbai in 2100 be a city that drowns, or a city that conquers the sea? A city of survival, or a city of triumph? The answer does not belong to the future. It belongs to the choices we make today. How do you see Mumbai in 2100? Share your thoughts in with us.